Jesus Christ commanded the church to fear not. Fear is mentioned in the Bible over 600 times. It's no small subject in the Word of God. From Genesis to Revelation, Abraham to John on the Isle of Patmos, we hear that commandment given over and over, fear not. That command was given to Abraham. That command was given to Israel. That command was given to Moses. It was given to David who ran from Saul for years, who lived in caves before he became a king. That command was given to Daniel who was going into the lion's den. That command was given to the city of Jerusalem. The angel Gabriel gave that message to Mary, to Peter who was sinking in the swirling tide of the Sea of Galilee, to Paul who had been on a ship for 14 days and it looked like all would be lost. The angel of the Lord appeared and said, Fear not, fear not, fear not. Every time you see in the Bible, fear not, which is all over the Bible, Fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's the main reason that the Bible gives for us not fearing is to know that God is with us and that if He's with us, He loves us and He will take care of us. But God says over and over, fear not, for I am with you. Remember, we're not talking about not having the feeling of fear. We're talking about not letting it stop you. We can't live our lives in fear and dread of what's going on and what's going to happen. Satan wants us to shrink back in fear and live little, tiny, useless lives. But God wants us to be brave and bold. Do not be afraid. It is said in different ways, different variations, but it's basically the same thing. Fear not. Do not be afraid. Be fearless. Fear ye not. Over and over and over again in different ways. God wants to say to us the exact same thing. In fact, it is so critical and so important to him that he gets to the New Testament and Paul writes a letter to a young man named Timothy. And he says, Tim, this is what you need to know. That he has not given us a spirit of fear. He says, of all the important things, Timothy, that you need to know in your life and in this ministry that God is sending you through, two, as you go through things in this journey of life that you will inevitably go through, he says, would you remember that what our God does not give is fear. He gives power and love and a sound mind. Isaiah 41 10 says fear not there's nothing to fear well isn't that interesting for I am with you that's the only answer he gives because I'm with you and so if we really know who the Lord is now I'm not talking about just going to church but I mean if you really know who the Lord is then we don't have to know what he's going to do we don't have to know when he's going to do it we don't have to know what the way is going to be we just say Lord I know you're with me and therefore I can do what I need to do because when fear causes you to stop and to do nothing, it's the master spirit, I believe, that the enemy uses to try to keep us from fulfilling our destiny. And so he, he tells us there's no way. He says, you, you gotta be afraid of this. You know, if you fail before, then you gotta be afraid that you're gonna fail again. But God says, fear not, for I am with you. I love that, there's nothing to fear. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed. You know, it's one of our problems. We look around us too much instead of looking up. The more you stare at your problems, the more you rehearse your problems, the bigger they're gonna get. Every time you go through something difficult, it makes you a little bit stronger. Just a little bit stronger. Fear is a fact of life. Fear of the future, fear of danger, fear of the past. Others fear the loss of their job, the loss of your health. There's a sudden and unexplainable pain, and it brings fear to your mind. Some of you fear the loss of position, the loss of self-esteem. You fear failure. You fear the criticism of other people. You fear exposure. 
You fear being disliked. There's a fear of death. There's the fear of the unknown. The era of human history is the era of anxiety and fear. When the fear knocks at your door, send faith to answer and no one will be there. Isaiah wrote, I will trust and I will not be afraid. We have to understand that fear, first of all, is a demonic spirit. It's not from God. I think it's the enemy's favorite tool in his toolbox. The sole purpose of which is to keep us from making progress and going forward. Fear's whole design is to stop you in your tracks or drive you back where you came from instead of you going forward and becoming all that God wants you to be. If we believe that our God does not give a spirit of fear, but you find or I find in my life that there is a spirit of fear attached to something specific in your life, an opportunity that you're intimidated by, a relationship, an endeavor, a ministry, a um, an interest of yours that just seems to cause you to feel a little bit paralyzed in insecurity or, fe or fear. If you and I know what we know now based on the scriptures that God does not give fear, but you sense that there is a spirit of fear attached to something in your life and you know God didn't give it, that means you know who did. And if the enemy has placed a spirit of fear on something in your life, it must mean that he is trying his best to keep you away from something. And if he's trying to keep you away from it, that must mean there's something in it that he does not want you to have. He wants you and I to be so paralyzed, so crippled, so disarmed, so disinterested from the very thing that he knows is exactly what God wants to take you through so that he can bring you to a new place in him. Do not be. A believer in Jesus Christ can only have one attitude toward fear, and this must be their attitude. I will not fear. I will not fear. Fear prevents forward progress. Is there anyone here who ever feels like that you have let fear keep you from doing what you know you were supposed to be doing? I beg you not to give up, but to press through and to be all that God wants you to be. Do all that He wants you to do so you can have all that He wants you to be. The reason why you have no reason to be afraid, my friend, as God calls you to go here or do that or go through this particular thing in your life, is not because you're so capable. It's not because you're so prepared. It is because you have a daddy who loves you. He has already gone behind the scenes. He has already orchestrated and uh, manipulated events and people and circumstances so that all he needs is a woman that's willing to say, yes, Lord, and stand there at the plate of his grace and his glory and his uh, calling on your life and to do what he's called you to do. And if you and I will just do it, we will realize we've been set up to hit a home run every single time. So if right now there is something crippling you, the enemy is working overtime to cause you to be afraid in your life. Will you hear this message from the Holy Spirit today? Step up to the plate. Do not be afraid. Your God has got your back. If God is for us, then what difference does it make really who's against us? Because God is certainly greater than anything or anybody that could come against us. And you know, I think that where we get into trouble is we believe that God is for other people, but are we sure that he's for us? Can I tell you something? You having a problem is not a sign that God doesn't care. It does not mean that God doesn't see you. It does not mean that he does not care about you. He wants to help you in your time of need and trouble. We give the enemy access to our life through fear. And we give God access to our life through faith. We don't have to be afraid of things. God will take care of us. 
Whatever's coming up in your future, even the stuff that you don't know about, God will take care of you. Come on, I said God will take care of you. Get it in your hands. God will take care of you. Amen. And that's really all we need to know. God's going to take care of us. God has not given us a spirit of fear.